All right, let's yeah. get on to your topic, Meta. Well, yeah. uh, I also have something new, quote unquote. Uh, not truly uh, new, but it is so new. It's but not, it's not. Yeah, it's not yeah, new. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not new, Coke. Is it? It's it's Schrodinger's new. Uh, is what it is. <laughs> so you just don't know if it's really new or not. Uh no. <laughs> so um, Neo two, the uh. A r- announced sequel last E3, I think, to Neo. Uh, yes, Correct. I yeah. believe so. Yeah, it was last E3 and kind of just remained quiet since. Uh, just came out recently with uh, a pretty sweet alpha. Um, but who got the alpha was completely random. Uh, and I mean, literally random. They and quite literally just took names out of a hat and uh, then did not <laughs> tell people until like it was not. all done and decided. Yeah, uh, people had no idea this was going on. It, it just suddenly happened. They just got random like, oh, invites yeah. out. Um, so if you were a lucky person and you got one and you didn't use it, uh, you're dead to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it came out and people got obviously a chance to get to try it out. Uh, if you want to go check out a streamer who uh, does it, and I'd recommend it, uh, Maximilian dude, um, did get the code. Oh, he got in. Yeah, he uh, somebody actually gave him the code. They said like, oh, wow. "Here's the code, and then uh, please just stream it." And that's so he did. He streamed uh, the Neo Two Alpha. We got to see a lot of it. Um, and was it was it just like one mission or? Yeah, it was the same thing like the last time they did the demos. It was just one mission, like bare minimum, uh, like setup, and you just start randomly into the mission. <laughs> uh, there's no story to it or anything. You just here's the mission, run mm-hmm. around. Um. And I got to say, I got some mixed feelings on it right off the bat. Just some very mixed feelings on it. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. Are they doing a Dark Souls 2? I don't know if it's a Dark Souls 2, because I, I, I really wasn't paying attention to Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2. And even Dark Souls 3, I, I barely paid any attention to. I'd probably say I looked more at Bloodborne than anything else. But uh, I can say uh, the game seems those both taken steps forward and at the same time left the other foot like about 10 feet back. Um, but it's still somehow connected. Uh, the game pops up, and, and the first thing you're going to notice right off the bat, a lot of assets from the original Neo are reused. Mm. Uh, the graphics and the design, the arc, the whole layout, it was, it looks like Neo. Like it doesn't even. And it's one thing because the game came out in like 2016 or 2017 is when Neo originally came out. It's not that old of a game, so it's understandable that the graphics probably aren't right. going to jump up a lot. But I mean, it doesn't even look like it was really touched up. It looks like it's literally running the same uh, textures and um, graphics and lighting systems. It doesn't look like they've touched anything in that regard. And I got to say, that's a little bit disheartening just to see right off the bat. Um, But, you know, like, well, that's just the graphics, meat and potatoes. What about those? And uh, I'm going to say the combat system is quite literally ripped from the first game <laughs> i mean i don't know how much they needed to change on that i don't know how much they needed to either but it's almost it's almost i want to say I mean, like I wanna... dark they... souls has like a lot of the same combat throughout the three of them like I, they I... generally added like one thing to each one i think the problem is though is that looking at uh the game it doesn't overall i would say that ultimately it doesn't feel like neo 2 it feels like Neo 2.0. And, and there's a pretty big difference in that, at least in my mind anyway. Um, because, I mean, a lot of the abilities don't seem to be have changed. It doesn't look like they've uh, mm. done really but, anything with I them. Mean, there's, there are some, there are a few new skills you can get for... Uh, I would assume there are more weapons. of them. Are there new weapons? No. No. They, uh, they did change the system of how skills are gained, though. They've changed the layout. It actually looks like a sphere grid now, which oh, uh, I'm, I'm totally for. Uh, uh, but now, like when you get like when you get the yeah. certain abilities that like go up ranks, like it's like rank one, rank two, rank three. Those are now just little spheres that are connected to each other in a line uh, <laughs> on this grid in some shape or form. Um, and uh, it's cute. I mean, like I love I like the sphere grid idea to it, um, which it just looks great. I I love the design out. It's far better than what they originally had. Um, but when you actually go through, at least in the alpha, anyway, what they've shown um, when you go through the actual skills, it's it's quite literally pulled from Neo. Um, I think, I think they had maybe one, if you were lucky, two new abilities for uh, the uh, weapons and, and stuff that they've shown. 
Um, they did, however, I will say split up some things. Um, a lot of the stuff dealing with stances and basic abilities that are kind of um, across the board for all weapons uh, are now put into what's called the Samurai, and that's kind of like your center, center skill bonus. Um, and the Samurai is just like, here is your ability to gain more key back. Here's your ability to gain more key back faster when you get like a perfect flux, or when you get a, a perfect flux, you gain some extra key back as well. Because those are shared between all the weapons, they put that into what's called the Samurai skill uh, and whatnot. Um, but the weapons themselves do retain all their original abilities. They do retain um, like their general uh, extra bonuses. Um, they did change a wording on something. Full health enemies are now just called unscathed. Um, just a different terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's kind of really how deep it gets in like the differences uh, on the end. Um, the plus side, however, is that we did get to see a couple new cool things that they are doing. Um Obviously, one of the biggest things in this game, is, if you don't know, is that in this game, they decided to take your living weapon instead of just making, like, uh, a really cool uh, usage of the spirit, a guardian that's with you. You now turn into a yokai yourself. You devil trigger, like, DMC. <laughs> uh, and it's great. I love it. Your character transforms oh completely. Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> your tra character transforms cool. completely. They yeah. get, oh, you also uh, have a character uh, creator now. Too. Yes, you do have a character creator now, which I'll get into a, a moment here for on the yokai part, especially because uh, this is gonna be. I thought this was really cool that you could do this. Um, so that yokai transforms, and uh, it does look better than living weapon. I, I did notice this one first off. It cool. does look like it just lasts longer. You can take more hits without it running out like right away, which I was very glad to see because I, I really hated the fact that if like if I was in living weapon and I wasn't Dynasty Warrior using up like just <laughs> spamming that attack button and something slapped me, I lost like three fourths of the bar, and it doesn't seem to really change on whatever difficulty it was on so i was kind of glad to see that you can take like a, 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 a number of hits like don't get me wrong it's not like you can stand there and you know take like 10 hits and nothing uh but you can take like three or four hits and that bar will still be around half of its meter left so you're not you're not down and out and losing your ability just because you got you know slapped or a swift breeze came in and you know pushed you over um you uh also you do gain uh super armor and if you're not familiar with that kind of terminology it just means that your character essentially when they're hit does not flinch or go into a stagger state they just continue to go with their attack it might slow down a little bit on the hit but they will continue through with their motion and slap the dude so you get that um damage bonuses are up you get unique combos i don't know how varied they are this is still the alpha but um you do get unique combos and certain mechanics that are uh alone tied to the yokai yeah, it looks like you get yokai skills yes there are yokai skills which i'll get into that as well um which is the other thing that you kind of get is when you kill yokai whether you're in your own yokai form or not they will actually drop what's called uh, a yokai soul core uh and you can pick it up and they'll have randomly assigned levels i'm guessing uh, to a certain extent around your level maybe i'm not sure uh, it's a little bit hard to say because there's only one stage and, and I've only really watched one streamer stream it. It doesn't look like there's actually a lot of tons of info on people doing uh, like the, trying to like, figure out everything on this little alpha. It wasn't a long lasting alpha. Um, but uh, what you do is you take that, you take it over to a shrine, which still exists. It's the same shrine with the same little uh, green dudes on top of it and whatnot. And uh, when you get there, it'll purify the cores, which is just a way of saying you can now use it. And uh, you can equip up to a certain value. Different souls have different values associated with them. Um, but you can equip two of them. And depending on what you equip, it will summon out that yokai spirit. And they will perform a certain attack or action oh, that is appropriate cool. for them. Uh, like the uh, original Yokis, um, if you do that one, he'll come out and grab the opponent and just slam him down on the ground. If you uh, put on like skeleton soul, it will like summon out a uh, two undead archers and they will fire off at the target that you're currently locked on to with flaming arrows uh, mm. that will do fire damage and piercing damage to them. And I think stuff from a blaze. So um, so there is that um, their cost on them essentially defines uh, you've got a meter that builds up and you gain that um, either by being in yokai areas or by just uh, dealing damage over time. And as you gain energy uh, and uh, Rita, you'll also level that up. Uh, and it's kind of a meter, and you spend it on these abilities. So more costly abilities uh, will obviously uh, be more powerful, but it also means they can't really be spammed, where some of the other ones, you can like kind of spam them a lot and utilize them, and they're pretty potent. Um, there, of course, are a lot of things that are just focused on yokai in this game in general, and they're really, they're really focusing on this part. Yeah. Uh, you get yokai weapons, which is essentially just a special weapon that has a corruption status on it, hmm. uh, which when you hit opponents will build up a... a 
a debuff on them that will eventually cause them to use up more key when they're attacking and be more susceptible to key damage. So you can harm yokai with yokai weapons hmm. as well, make them easier to break their uh their essentially their super armor. Um, it also has uh, a meter attached to it that as you level, as you fight and you kill creatures and whatnot, that meter will slowly rise up. And from what I understand of it, when it caps out for a period of time, it's going to slowly start to drain down. But you're able to apply that status effect much more easily and you just hmm. do more damage in general. So it's kind of a like a soft limit break almost. Oh, that's called the Yokai Force, I think. I've yes, seen. that's the, the Yokai, yokai Watch. Force. <laughs> yes, the Okai Watch. <laughs> so there is that. Um, there's also there's also a a, you know, a new one called um, benevolent, or not benevolent. I, I believe like um, sacred weapons, and it's kind of the same thing, but the opposite. They're just like instead of corruption, they're sacred. Mm. I, I don't fully understand them either. I'm not sure if they do the same concept or not. Again, only so much going on. I haven't had a chance to really delve into what people have found out there um and yeah. from what i can see most people don't really know yet but it seems to do the kind of the same thing but opposite i'm kind of hoping that it, it's not just like a flip-flop um there's <laughs> more to it but who knows uh they did add in a new stat as well um they added in courage uh which is a little bit weird um it kind of uh it, they've kind of separated a little bit of the more skills out and, and I don't remember fully what courage links itself to, um, but it does affect key. Uh, I think some key focus and it has a little bit of an effect on certain uh, weapons. Uh, it, it seems to have taken away a little bit from what the skill stat did because originally see. skill kind of raised up your key uh, regeneration. It looks like, yeah, it affects key recovery speed and lightning yeah. resistance. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Weird. Um, they yeah, lightning a, resistance to it. Yeah, the lightning resistance is really weird to it. Um, so, but yeah, that's what courage does. It's it kind of took away from skill. So, hey, there's that. Um, they did. I, I already talked over. They did rework the skill trees. Um, they look really cool. Yeah, uh, it, but they are. It seems like they don't time to weapons now. Yeah. Um, the, the, all the abilities in those trees, by the way, are tied to weapons. Like when you're leveling up, uh, a certain weapon, you don't just get a random skill point. You get a skill point of that specified type of weapon. It's not oh, just okay. to be spent on anything. So if you're wielding like, oh, by the way, one of the new weapons is double hatchets, which is really cool. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit. Just explain what they do. Um, but if you're wielding like double hatchets and you get like uh the if you as you're like going along with them you'll level up your ability with them it's only going to give you a point for hatchets it will not give you a point uh just for anything like mm. it used to that also means that all that delicious hair you were eating uh now has <laughs> specific titles towards it there's uh, katana hair there's hatchet hair uh Is that literally their name <laughs> no that it's a different name but it's like no. uh master swordsman hair of like whatever something like that um, but it is like hair of X, Y, or Z. It's no longer just Master Samurai's uh, hair and stuff like that. I, I don't even know why they did that. It was always really weird. Um, but yeah. There's so, probably some, you know, lore attached to it that I we don't I'm, know. I, yeah, I'm sure. I, they don't really go out and say it. Um, a lot of lore, they actually, in the first game, they kind of was always up front about everything, which was a little bit sad, a little bit. I was kind of really hoping for that Dark Souls vibe of like, you really kind of yeah. have to patch things together by yourself. But uh, it is what it is, and I liked it for what it was. Um, yeah. There's also uh, now purple Kodamas. You might remember the green guys. You can send them to the shrine, and they give you, like, passive bonuses and whatnot. But the purple dudes, they wear a skull mask, and they have a little, uh, little like, stick and whatnot. And they <laughs> want you to give them something. And if you give them an item, what they are, want to do is either create multiple items of similar categories of randomized values, generally better than what you give them, sometimes... Or they might just give you a flat-out better version of the item that you give or an equivalent variant that is a better version of what you gave them. But it is a bit of an RNG-ish system. It's kind of almost like a a luck roll in your favor, but a luck roll all the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some new Kodama blessings as well. It's no longer just dropping sword armor, elixir, or I think money, I think was the last one. Um uh, there are some Too, more in there. so many weapons and armor. <laughs> yeah, so many weapons and armor. Um, so there's that. There is also um, what's called benevolent graves, which instead of uh, in the original game you had uh, graves, and if you went up to them, they were always going to give you um, a malevolent spirit would pop out, and you gave you a chance to like fight other people who had um, 
who had uh, died somewhere nearby and they had their equipment. It would kind of take a snapshot of it and you had a chance to fight them and even potentially get the equipment that they were utilizing um, with the stats on there and everything. At least until later on in patches, they changed it up a bit. But that was kind of the purpose and the point of it. Um, but now, these benevolent graves, you can go up to them and you activate them like a malevolent grave, but now, instead, uh, they come up with a spirit who's like, hey, buddy, I want to help you out. And it's an AI, and he'll just run around with you and fight with you and uh, <laughs> and just cool stuff. Yeah, and that's cool. Like the, they, they always had those in the Soulsborn stuff. Yeah, so it was really cool to see the benevolent graves. It's really weird. Uh, they do require resources for the benevolent graves, though. Um, they require uh, choco cups, at least in the alpha they did anyway, um, which can drop from... Uh, completing missions or killing certain enemies or were people able really, to take them into boss fights yeah so you can take them yeah, i mean you can take them anywhere you can take them to boss fights you can take them over i guess wherever else that's not a boss fight i mean they'll go with you anywhere they'll follow you mm -hmm. um there's also a couple of other things like there's a little cat that you can find now who's adorable and if you pet him <laughs> he will follow you everywhere and roll around he literally rolls to move around <laughs> uh and uh, he raises up your yokai forest meter. So uh, he's absolutely useful for that. So it kind of lets you use that a little bit more liberally while he's with you. Um, but he is there only for a period of time before he vanishes into the air. So um, speaking of yokai again, and as you pointed out, Mal, there is a uh, created character. You are no longer playing as the Irishman William. You now play as your own character, both male and female. Uh, the alpha, unfortunately, only had presets uh, for, mm. so you just chose the sex, and then you chose whether you wanted to be this looking version or this looking version, and that was it. Um, but you could see all the options that they have at least <laughs> currently implemented and planned, uh, and one of them is yokai. You can change how your yokai form looks, and I think that is amazing. I love the idea that not only can you change your main character, but you can change how he looks at his devil trigger. That's completely awesome. That's pretty yeah, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they've added more magic and um, ninja skills, which definitely were lacking. Yes, magic and ninja skills have gotten revamped and Even some bare handed stuff. Yep. Yep, they've they've revamped in those areas. Those are the ones that really truly got like benefits. Yeah. Um, they only gave you four weapons, and I'm really hoping these aren't the final trees. I, I can only assume so. I really think they were just trying to get an idea of people's thoughts yeah. right now. I um, I mean there'll probably be at least one one or two betas as well. So Yeah. So I, I'm really hoping this is the, they were just like really just trying to get an idea of that they've got a working package now and they wanted right. to give it to there us. Might even, there might even be some graphical polishing towards the I'm, end. Yeah, I, I really think a lot there's a lot of stuff there, and I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because honestly, they deserve it. Uh, when Neo first came out last time, the uh, the alpha and the beta were a huge success. They took a lot of what players said into account and uh, took everything that was good and made it better. By the time that game had gone from its alpha release for the public to the final release, it there was, was definitely some changes. Oh, there was some changes, and it was <laughs> all the be the better. It really yeah. was. So honestly. I'm I don't really care um, if a game if I loved playing a game I don't need it to change a whole lot like I'm fine with most of everything being the same the only mm -hmm. thing I really want is better level design and yes. a, yes. a bit more um, enemy uh, enemy variety which again we won't know until the full game comes out yes I will say this um, that is not an unheard of complaint. I've heard a lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah level uh, it's was. definitely a common it's, thing I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I, I want it to. I want that desperately because I think I still like, think I am hundred percent fine playing Neo One with just more different with different level, like actual uh, level and enemy variety. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. I still think that my favorite level in Neo One is the first level. Uh, mm, it is I good. always. I really like that one. It just always felt the most appropriate. You start from the backwater of an island, you go up to the manor, and then you open up right into the actual village down below before going to the beach and heading on to the boat. There's a lot of variety in that level, and there's a lot of things. They've got a small shrine area that you go to. Um, I'm also a big fan of the uh, frost level with the killing the butterflies because of how yes. winding it is. <laughs> yes, I really like it. It's all around itself. It's all over the place. There's actually a lot of paths you can end up missing or even not taking because there's multiple ways to get from the beginning uh, yeah, to the end. A so, lot of them ended up being like the similar style as the first mission, just like, you know, a destroyed buildings and whatnot in the yeah, know, and general environment. Yeah, which is a shame because I... I that's unfortunately just a really 
dang shame because there's a lot of like, oh also the ninja fun. the ninja house was pretty cool ninja house was fun a lot of fun because it, re- it put in something new for you to do in the stage yeah um, but there's definitely a lot like those stages are far and few between there's a lot right. of stages i remember i remember also the, a lot of the side missions being incredibly boring uh and i'm really hoping oh yeah the side yeah. missions get uh, a touch up as well they were just different sectioned off things of the main missions which yeah uh, and sometimes yeah. even just specific spots that you couldn't even uh, go to. Right. Uh, I remember seeing them reused. A yeah, lot I went. I mean, I, I'd expect that to come back in a degree. Like, I doubt it'll they'll all end up going away. But having some areas unique to side missions would be a good place to, yeah. you know, uh, for that. Just so that they're not all that take place in places you've already been. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the side missions did have like their own locations or areas that you didn't go into in a main mission, but it, it wasn't enough. It, that's the problem. Nah. Is that there was too often times where a side mission was just somewhere you've already been, or they would reuse or just on a same... bridge. Yeah, yeah. Or they would reuse a location that they had already used multiple times, like two, not like one or two, not not one or even dare I say two times, but sometimes they use it up to three or four times. And I mean, I believe there is always a story reason. Like there's always like, hey, a story we need reason. to go back here and do the yes. thing. But there's always a story reason, but the problem was that it I wasn't like they're like, here's a new location that it just happens to be the exact same map. That's what uh, uh well, uh, I guess that's not what Dragon Age two did exactly, but Yeah. And um, then uh yeah. the, the other problem, like I said, is the variety of it else. Generally it was just like go here and kill these things or kill this boss that you've already faced before. Um there was generally nothing new about these side missions. So I'm not sure what the purpose of them really was to serve beyond running through the first time to like get some extra skill points or something. And uh, yeah, that's very boring. new gear and stuff like yeah. it, getting but gear it is definitely a big part of Neo. It seemed or like it is. I but, think like, that's the problem, what... but the problem with that was, is that uh, there were they eventually made those obsolete because the, the final stage was generally the highest level one from certain side missions and then only very specific side missions, um, generally boss rush ones were ones that gave you really great gear um, yeah yeah it was just like to go mission. through yeah well, and then you you would get you'd unlock gear and then also like spirits and stuff yep i mean the most but. interesting thing they did was definitely when they did the patch where you could go down to um the yokai realm itself and you mm. would uh go through like essentially uh a, a boss gauntlet so to speak <laughs> and they would have different yeah. abilities or effects that would go on depending on what stages or uh, things you shut down so which hopefully like they would have just all of the benefits or everything they added to Neo one could just be in the base of this game. Yeah. And that's what I'm really hoping for as well. Um, The things that did not change are pretty much all the items, uh, weapon categories and moves, similar stats. There's Mm -hmm. the co-op system that really hasn't been touched up on. Apparently there were some issues trying to run it on the alpha, not surprised. Yeah. Um, But unfortunately that means that people didn't really get to uh, do anything. It is on the same exact engine which explains a lot of why the graphics are, but it is there's been no touch up on it whatsoever. Um, that's been confirmed. Uh, armor slots, talisman slots, and accessories haven't changed either. So that is all the stuff that we have seen. Um, but that yeah, being said, I, hopefully uh, we'll see more at E3. Yep, yeah, I'm really hoping we do. Uh, I'm kind of I'm hoping. I'm hoping that E3 will really expand on it because I think that's the perfect time to show off a lot of it. I'm looking forward to Neo 2. Uh, Neo mm-hmm. 1 was great. and uh, I, I like the kind of uh, build your own character aspect. Cause that, I do too, yeah. But because that opens it up to the more kind of uh, from softy, uh, yes. old school story. Telling. Yeah, I, I... There would have to be something really wrong for me to just not actually just get this game. Even if it did have like the basic level yeah. design and whatnot, I'd still end up playing it. <laughs> I'd definitely still play it. I mean, it's in Neo 2. If it's Neo 2.0, by all means, I'm still going to play it. Neo is a good game, and I really want to support it. I would be disappointed, though. Right. Because I, know, oh, because, yeah. I, because I know this developer. I know this developer. I know the publisher they're under. I know they can do a better job. So it would be really disappointing to know that they could have done something way better yeah. or at least touched I mean, up if, on the areas that Neo wouldn't even is... change gameplay. <laughs> if there's a Neo 3, it'll probably be on the PS5. So hopefully it'll have a... yeah enhanced engine by then i would i would assume so <laughs> um but i yeah, i'm looking forward to it uh oh uh one thing i forgot to talk about they only had the four weapons on there which was uh katana odachi, odachi. 
Dual um, hatchet. Dual hatchets. And what was the last one? Spear. Uh, spear. Thank you. Yes. Um, every other weapon. Spear uh, bros. Yeah, Odachi, Spears, Katana, kind of played, played exactly the same they were. They had a couple new abilities. Like I said, you either got right. one or two of your lucky new abilities in there. Hopefully those aren't the only weapons in the game. I don't, really uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. A lot of people are pondering if there wasn't like a lot done. They just really wanted to see people's first yeah. reaction to the game. Uh, and they kind of get some feedback on what they currently It'd be a real now. dick move, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, it would be a real dick move. But it seems weird because they really because they've already brought in a lot of stuff, so it seems weird not to have like two yeah. katanas and the kasari gama. And uh, hopefully there will be at least one or maybe even two new weapons that we haven't I'm, seen. Uh, yeah, I mean the ha the double hatchets are definitely new. Um, which right, by right, the way, I meant beyond that because they're yeah. like dual hatchet is similar to dual sword. Yeah. Um, I will say something about the dual hatchets though. They they are main mechanic around them seems to be able to that you have uh, range attacks. Um, you can charge them up to toss them. Uh, depending uh -huh. on the stance, will change how it works. Um, and they did actually do some really good thought about this one. High stance. Uh, the throwing attack for the hatchets will actually give you um, uh, a piercing hatchet. It will hit an enemy and then continue to go on through until the full end of the length of the weapon itself. So in the high stance, you're kind of getting this piercing effect that'll hit multiple foes. Um, in uh, middle stance, it gives a little bit more versatility. You can actually throw dual hatchets um, in a in a uh, before use. You can hit multiple enemies with it. Um, low stance is about um, kind of that speed and rapidness and, and a bit more trickiness to it. You can throw a hatchet up in the air that will just fly up and then land on top of the target after a period of time, so you can combo into it. Um, you can also do rapid hatchet throwing, which is um, you just throw them really quickly one after another as well. It'll only hit one target or whoever you're generally aiming at in that direction, but uh, you will be throwing multiple of them. So it's it's a pretty... I, I really like the thought that they put into the uh, the hatch mechanics, um, mm. but they've got a lot of them in there and whatnot. Not a very countery weapon, uh, but it does generally do a lot of attacks. So it's kind of a bit fast-paced, range striker. Um, from what I recall, there is no counter or anything on it, so if you're blocking, you're just blocking. Uh, oh, no, there is one counter. Um, not a fancy counter, though. It's not a knockdown counter. It's just uh, you knock uh, knock the weapons away and you slam into them, but you're not in an invincible animation when you are doing this. So mm. you can't I be don't interrupted. No, what else kind of weapon I would want added? Uh, Tetsubo. Tetsubo? Yeah. yeah. Tetsubo. I'm just trying to think <laughs> of like, how to differentiate it from like the large axe or whatever. I'm not sure, because the large axe also counted, like, hammers. Or and Adachi. Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious what they could add, but that's why they, they're making the game. I, I There's so many weapons out there and whatnot. I mean... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what they could add that would be different enough. Is yeah. Really... Yeah, that's a really hard thing to say. Don't know. Really don't know. But anywho. Yeah. But I'm uh, looking forward to the game. Hopefully, E3 will bring more to it. 